They ain't got no muscle, no hustle, no backbone. I stand alone, not tripping. Just say I'm different. Ain't hanging on to the coat sales of the next man. Passport in my left hand, thinking that you are next. Heck, you ain't holding your. Um. Okay. Let's see here. Uh, the disclaimer, of course, it's made for entertainment purposes only, and it's not tax investment or any other advice. It's not a promotion or sale or an inducement to purchase anything or invest your money. You never get financial advice from a complete stranger on the internet. Watching this video, you agree to hold harmless me, its author and creator. Always consult with your advisor before you do anything with your money. Okay, so today we're going to talk about a couple of topics that I've talked about before, but I'm going to skip through because I really want to spend some time on price discovery. So most of you know my history. Um, you know what my first rule of trading is, which is to protect capital, which is much more than just a catchphrase. Um, uh, if you've been around the room, you can see that that is what drives every investment decision I make is protecting capital. If it's not a good enough risk or a good enough reward for the risk I'm taking on in the time frame I want to be in it, then I won't take the trade. It's not a big deal. Um, conversely, when trades don't happen to go in my favor, uh, I'm okay with that too. It happens. That's part of investing. Um, Protecting capital also means respecting stops and scaling winners. Now, what I want to talk about today and, and spend a lot of the session on is talking about price discovery and price discovery as it relates to bots and to algorithms. Um, you know why I use options? Because of the leverage. I'm able to risk uh, small amounts of capital relative to holding underlying, the underlying and it also gives me greater flexibility than just holding equities. Um, we've talked about this before, and we can talk a little bit about what I think is going on with the market today. Uh, but obviously, you're both, you know, macro versus price. Another way to put that is story versus price. So uh, I was talking to, I think the conference room earlier today and one of the points that i made was and we can use any stock as an example let's use nfx but you know the story is great the, the possibilities are great and let's assume that 100 percent or 90 percent of what they say they're going to do they do okay then quantify the time it's going to take and i will tell you then what option contract I'm going to use, what structure, all that, what strike, what duration. Because here's my point. Time is one of the biggest variables when you compute risk, time risk. Both there's the loss of opportunity time if you're not invested, but there's also what I think most people fall into, which is thinking that if you're always invested all the time, that you do better over time. That's actually not the truth there have been tons of studies about that um but anyway so quantify time quantify what the story is in terms of which macro event is going to make you know is how much will move the, new, the needle right um until somebody can do that i'll stick with trading price so uh I, and i don't think you need to be a short-term trader to trade price either um, one of the best strategies that I've seen that is incredibly boring is you use the weekly chart for the SPY and you go long when it's an uptrend and short when it's in a downtrend. And we, you know, in the room, we talk about the specific setups, what we look for for that. So uh, these are the, we've talked about the indicators I use. Uh, I've actually taken the 200 day off, but point of control, standard deviation channels. Uh, really, the one that I pay a lot of attention to is point of control, um, as well as the MACD, Histo, and Smart Money, because both of those are going to give you a real-time view of what's going on with big money. And that's all I care about, uh, generally speaking, because 90% of the volume is algorithmic and bots. It's more than that now. Price discovery. All right. Here's when I 
I think probably one of the most central pieces to the way I trade is price discovery. It has to do with price discovery. And what I mean by that is when you're looking at a stock and let's, let's just use today and we're going to use the cues today. Okay. And I will switch my screen here in a second, the queue chart. Okay. So tomorrow when the market opens, okay, in order for there to be directional momentum, so either this reverses itself or this confirms with a third day, right, trend, because I use a three-day rule, okay, unless and until price breaks one of these areas, it's a nothing burger. No directional, um, no direction has been chosen either up or down. Now, after three candles are moving sideways, you have direction. It's called consolidation. So here's what I mean by price discovery. So we know that the bots are in the market. The absolute most basic principle that all bots and all algorithms are built upon is something called reversion to the mean. It is used both for reversal trades, you can use it for macro. All you have to do is set the mean, whatever the data point is. Um, you can use it for continuation trades. Are there areas, are you nearing a price area that is um, so far away from the mean that it becomes statistically significant that a reversion is the easier direction to go, okay? So they're built off reversion to the mean, and, and, and this sounds very simple, but again, I'm talking at the base level programming. The first thing they're gonna do tomorrow, okay, if they don't test the low end, because right now the path of least resistance is to the downside. So today to the low side, price discovery ended right here, right at the low. Beyond that, nobody in today's, nobody, None of these participants today, okay, know what else is down here. So think about bots and algorithms this way. Algorithms are passive. Bots are active, okay? Algorithms are used a lot when you hear the term algorithmic, okay? They're going to be longer macro trades. Uh, their algorithms are going to be primarily based on um, fundamental and macro data, okay? Perhaps it's a uh, free cash flow growth rate. I mean, it gets it can get pretty complicated, uh, but uh, algorithms are are passive though. Okay, bots are not passive; they're active. And so, what they're going to do is tomorrow they're going to there's going to be some bots that are going to see if there's any other selling here. At the same time, there are bots that will push price. Try to to see if they can cause selling down here. Then you have bots that are trying to do the reverse. And in time periods of milliseconds, those battles, those decisions are being won and lost, okay? Until the amount of volume and activity over a certain period of time, whatever number of seconds or minutes that is, overwhelms, okay, the rest of the participants even as for a very short time period, okay? Momentum is built when you get three periods of whatever time period you're using, okay? When you get three periods, that's when momentum builds. So tomorrow, price discovery to the downside will not occur until we break 490.73. We are gonna have bots that are gonna try to do that, okay? We also might have bots that try to Test the top side, okay, the high of the day. Literally, that's two of the things that they're going to try to do tomorrow, okay? And, and it is simple, right? There is a third thing. And whenever you, I, I don't care how big the candle is, any of these candles, but there are, they're one of the base, and of course, this is base. So 
they'll change this and they'll add a volume component or uh, a time component, whatever it is. This 50, this 50 mid 50 line here, there will be bots that trigger buys above it and sells below it. Okay. It might be an additional factor in the programming that accelerates buys or sells, depending on where you're at within the quadrants. You know, are you in the top quadrant or the top 10% here? Maybe that accelerates buying more. Okay. But you, that is going to be the first battle. So, when I see a candle like this, the very first thing that I'm thinking is I'm looking for trend continuation. Why? Because it's the highest probability, most simple outcome um, looking just at today's candle, right? I'm looking for continuation. However, if I get a retrace, I know that as long as that retrace doesn't play around too much above 50 percent it's merely a retrace it's not a change in direction from down now to up okay now let's look at what these market participants they had one two three four previous days okay so because of today's action all of this now has been negated right it, it, what it means is it's no longer uh a significant data point except for the fact that you have a nice clean support level here right so you could draw it across those but i draw it right here let's put things in, in perspective yeah, today was the first 2% down day, I think, since, uh, what, October? Okay. Um, no, the market was not overbought at 82% RSI. That's not overbought. That's entering overbought area. But truly overbought for RSI trigger is going to be anywhere north of 90 to 95. Okay? So here we go. For every bear that is calling the top, well, I've heard them do this before, a lot. And part of the problem with that, that pursuit of trying to figure out or call the top, quite frankly, is it's meaningless. And I'll explain to you why. One of the, th there's, there's a simple test whenever I talk to somebody and they, you know, they tell me they're, you know, they're really good at trading or investing or they're a professional or whatever. I, it's pretty easy to figure out. Hold on. Now, the first thing almost 99% of traders will say, anybody will say, is what direction it's going to go, whatever it is. Okay. It's going to go up, it's going to go down. It's the next two questions will tell you whether or not this person is a gambler or a trader. What's your stop and what's your target? Because not having either one of those is like getting in your car with no destination. So you don't know how far you're going to have to drive. You don't know how much money you have to bring. No map. Okay. And you have not even thought about what it would take to turn around. If I told you I was going to set off on a trip like that, I think you'd say you're probably going to get in an accident or something worse. Well, that's what happens with investing. So here, here's here's what I'm looking at. Let's so for all the top callers, okay? You may be right. I mean, even a clock is right twice a day, and y'all have been wrong, all the top callers for a long time. So even if they're right, uh so what? We are still trading. Okay. Right now, it's a whopping 14 points off the high. 13 points. Whoop de doo. 13 over 503. Well, it comes out to what? Like 0.13%. 
three. Uh, no, no, thirteen over five oh three. Okay, two point two, a little over two percent. Big deal. I mean, literally, it's not a big deal. So, again, look at the price, not the emotion in the market. Okay. Also, if this does turn out to be reversal, well, this down here is a very stout supportive area. And that's why I have this an alert, this alert drawn here. It's very supportive. And it's been in there, you know, for a while, almost a month. And if that fails, I do know I have down below. Sitting right here, 449. So if the market takes a 10% crapper, um, and you you all know where I think the market's gonna head eventually. I just don't think we're there yet. Or let me rephrase it. I don't know if we're there yet, but there's major support here, 450 level, okay? Line in the sand for the bulls is real simple. It's 500 on the Qs. Market loves even numbers, all right? Let's get back to price discovery though. So looking at price discovery, when you draw your lines on a chart, what you are actually looking for when you look for support and resistance levels are in relative to the current period's candle. So this is whether you're looking at the five minute, the daily, the weekly, the monthly, okay? Relative to the current period's candle, where is the next place where price discovery occurred? Okay, did it occur here? No, because we had it. Did it occur here? No, this was here. Did it here? Nope. Here? Nope. <gasps> right here. Okay. Technically here where this ends, okay, where today's price discovery ended. So we know that looking left, the next time there will be a battle, right, where there has been a battle before, because that's important, because one of the data points that bots trigger off and algos trigger off of is historical price action, okay? So once we get here, then you look for, okay, but what's the next area of major support? Well, it's not here. It's going to be here. And then next is going to be here to here. Okay? That's all you're doing is you're looking for areas where there was additional price discovery. Now, this is important. That truncated. It, mean, it means whether it was to the top side or the downside, the price discovery ended, okay? And then you do the same thing for the top side. Now, when we're faced with the queues and you say, well, there's, you know, there's nothing to the top side, right? Well, that's where you have probably going to use standard deviation calculation um, or you're going to use Fibonacci's, okay? However, let's look at NFX. NFX. Sorry, I got notes everywhere. Okay, here's NFX. Just looking at this trade. We went, um, so we broke, came up here, and it struggled here for one day. Finally broke through, okay? So now, if I look at today's candle, where is the next top side area where price discovery ended, truncated? So I have to go all the way over here and I go, doo, doo, doo. yeah, right here. Minor, why? It's one point. Minor, why? It's one point. These are not major areas of resistance, okay? So when I look at today where we closed, not where we opened or the range, when I look at today, I still see a higher close than yesterday. I see a higher high, perhaps a megaphone pattern, which is going to increase volatility. But all in all, okay, we've traded from this zone, right? right here, into this zone. Well, guess what price is gonna wanna do? 
again, think of this as one big candle. The first thing it's going to want to do is maybe test back down at the bottom of the zone. Then it's going to try to push towards the midpoint, right? And if it gets above it, it'll probably it will cause more buying momentum to test this line. There is a reason why price stopped, and, and I, in, in, you know, the, some of the VIPs have seen this, where it will literally stop on the tick. And that's part of the reason why I have all these lines drawn all the time, because I want to be able to prove and say, look, I, I, I drew this a long time ago. But no matter what the time frame, okay, you can look at and find where the next price discovery is going to occur. Here's the weekly. Hey, guess what? The next time we know that there won't be price discovery until we break the low or the high. And if we do that, I want to see where price discovery could stop. Yeah, it could stop there. Or how about here? Remember, I always talk about confluence, right? What do we have? We got confluence. We have the point of control on the weekly. We've got the open, we got the open close, and we got it very close to the close. So, I'll, oh, and we have an even number of 12 bucks. So I would look at that and say, you know, that could be a very supportive area, okay? I got multiple data points, I got confluence. And then if I'm looking to the top side, what I do is I go, okay, where's my first candle I'm gonna run into? Oh, there it is, and there it is. All right, I had a line drawn. Okay, 2168. Go back to the daily. Yep. So I think this thing, all things being equal, right now, that if price is able to reengage, uh, is able to continue momentum, we're going to hit at least 20 bucks. 20 is an even number. And if it breaks that, we get 2168 before the next battle occurs okay so that's how when you look at any time frame right why why doing it this way and thinking about it from okay i gotta find the next area where there's going to be a battle over price discovery when you start looking at it that way you'll start seeing things like this which I've talked about before. And here's a battle zone. And here's a battle zone. And here's a battle zone. Okay. These, these prices We've gone from this zone to here. Now we've got to see what price wants to do. First, got to get to the 50% to trigger other buys. Then it's going to want to test this upper range. If it breaks that, we got this. And, and there's not a lot of resistance up here. That's the other thing I, I, I'm not quite sure the bears, the shorter term bears understand right now. From a technical basis, there's not a lot of resistance. All you have to look at is the point of control on the daily. So, all right. So that's no matter what stock I'm looking at um, or if I'm scalping, I am looking for areas of price discovery. So Tesla, okay? Always start with your monthly chart. Why? Because you want to get a flavor for the personality. You also want to see, is it the monthly in a buy or sell? Monthly's in a buy, right? Then you go to the weekly. Is the month the weekly in a buy or sell? Are there channels you can draw? What, you know, what can I see? There's a lot of market participants, by, by the way, playing this channel. I'll show you. Not this channel, this trend line. Right here. So they're saying that price should retrace, bounce off this trend line and go. I, I don't play trend line, so I don't, 
I don't think that that's true, but okay. It's not, I don't, I don't use in the trade. Um, so this is actually a, a bullish move. Additionally, if you look at today's action, There it is. Okay. We're at 241 right now. Okay. Where could this find support? Well, here at the top of this gap, here at the start of the gap, here, top of the gap, start of the gap. But you really don't run into really decent support until you get oh, right around that 200 level again. Yeah, Tesla could give it all back. Right. But you know, I'm not looking for a setup in Tesla right here. I'm just trying to point out that in order for any of this to happen or any of this to happen, the first battle that's going to occur is tomorrow or however long it takes to break out of this candle's range to an area of new price discovery. Until that happens, okay, it doesn't matter all this stuff. This stuff matters after this candle, after its range gets violated. But until then, we don't know. You know, this could be just this could be the reversal, or this could be just a fake out on uh, news that was never confirmed, by the way, in the robo taxis, and the market will continue to go up. And I think it's, you know, human beings are impatient. So they hear this, you hear this and you go, okay, well, then you just have to be patient. But people aren't patient. They want to trade it now. And their victory that they get is, I chose the direction right. But they still don't make money. Okay, well, because you chose the direction. I mean, that's like, fourth grade, fifth grade stuff. You are trying to be a professional. You're going to have to do a lot better than just choose the direction and then just hope that it moves enough for you to make money. Again, going back to first rule of capital, the first rule of trading is protect capital. If you can't answer those three questions, okay, direction, stop, and target, you should not be investing your money. And I know people will laugh at me all day long, but I only know a couple people who have been able to consistently beat my returns. Okay, They can laugh at me all the time. I mean, I mean, they can laugh at me, but what I'm saying is, once again, you all have been trained to do it wrong. And trading has been described as uh, long periods of boredom interspersed with very short-term periods of sheer terror, okay? And that is what trading is. It's not terror. I mean, if you get to the point where you expect and you know that you're going to win over the long term, it's quite enjoyable. But until you get to that point, yeah, it can be terrifying. Uh, people mistake that you've got to have lots of activity. You, you, you don't. More activity doesn't mean that you're going to have a higher probability of making money. Okay. Um, I use the daily for trades. I use the weekly chart for trends. Okay. And it's purely a mathematical decision. Right. Even if three days in a row happen to the upside or the downside, if I'm looking for a reversal of major trend, then I surely can't be using the daily because it will produce for me such a small sample of data relative using ooh, a weekly. So I want to have a sufficient number of data because only by having a minimal base set of data, can you truly trust statistical significance and history and probability? So I, I use the weekly for major trend changes. And right now, 
on the queues, you're not going to know until the end of next week whether or not we just saw the top. Okay. So if it, I mean, if this thing reverses, okay, it will be the first reversal that didn't get a stick save since here. 10 of 2023. Okay. And you would have lost money on that trade. But then you would have been long and stick save here. Everything else never triggered. It's a breakout trade. So you wouldn't have wouldn't have been a reversal. And anyway, you would have probably set your stop somewhere around here. So you would have got stick save the next week. Hmm. So um that's when again price discovery price discovery it's what bots are doing it's what algos are doing remember algos are passive bots are active okay and that's that that's those are the fingerprints uh, the evidence that you're looking for when you're trading and it's okay we can talk about long term trading you can do the same thing okay i've seen people do it they use they'll use the monthly or you can even use the weekly You'll get chopped up sometimes, but you're not going to miss the big runs. I'm talking about the big runs, right? I've seen people use the weekly. Um, no matter what you time frame you want to use, what I hope you are getting from today is there is a reason why support and resistance levels get specific ones get tested. And if you watch them, you start to see the rhythm of the bots and the algos at work. If you go to the one minute chart when the market is, you know, if you come to the scalp room on Thursday mornings, you will see me point out specific price levels and say, watch, watch, let's see if the bots get triggered. Sometimes they don't. But then all of a sudden, sometimes, a lot of the time actually, more frequently than you think, you'll see all of a sudden this big old candle come in, buying. We're going to the top side. Okay, and those are bots. And then you'll be able to literally see candle after candle if they've been successful in attracting other bots. It's wild. And that's that's pretty much that's exactly what I'm doing on swing trading. It's also obviously what I'm doing on scalping. Knowing where the majority of market participants are going to have to make are going to be making decisions. Okay. Yes, they're making decisions every milliseconds, but there are specific areas, specific support and resistance areas, um, uh, all-time highs, all-time lows. Um, let's uh, let's see what other one. Point of control, VWAP channels. There are specific areas where bots are playing, paying particularly close attention. Okay, because they know as a result of the price action in that area, that the probability for a larger move will occur. So yeah, they're paying attention. So it's taking advantage of this like self-fulfilling prophecy that the bots have and the algos have. It's taking advantage of the fact that uh, for the most part when they model, even if they're doing like you know, they, a lot of them, well, all of them, the good ones, you know, are doing Monte Carlo simulations. Um, so as to try to deal with the inefficiency in um, the whole concept of normal distributions. Um, sorry to nerd out, but but for, for at the end of the day, what, what bots and, and algorithms are trying to do is the very thing that we do. It, they're trying to cause or catch traces of momentum. That's what they're trying to do, okay? And if you know what the majority of the market participants are doing, which are the bots and algos, then you increase your probability of protecting capital, number one, but you also increase your probability of trading profitably. And that's why retail is liquidity because they're not paying attention to any of us 
they're too caught up in the whole thing of I feel this. It has to. It won't. All those statements, none of which can be quantified into a tradable methodology or model. So anyway, uh, I don't need to belabor it. Do we have any questions? Any questions? Hey, boss, can you go back to the, go ahead. Yeah. Can you go back to the cues on the daily? Mm-hmm. And the MCDX? Yep. I'm confused. I thought if it was like it was all red, that meant buying. But the MCDX. Well, that was, that was the. Them. Right here. Well, but did you see the today, graphic though. I put in the. Uh, did you see the graphic? Here. Check it out. It's from Bloomberg. That's why you're seeing that. GC. Okay, I saw that. Yeah. So okay. I, I I mean what I think it is, I I I honestly here's what I don't get. So CPI came in cooler than expected. Okay. So that's good inflation came down and it wasn't so cool as to be recessionary just this data point okay and why did the market go down then because isn't that bullish and isn't a cut bullish this remember the big money okay and the big money is a big herd Okay, they follow each other around. Even the bots do it, right? Because if you're a bot and you're learning and you're learning that this other bot is kicking your ass, then you're going to start probably trying to do what the other bot's doing. And so it's this arms race to mediocrity that is happening among the bots. That's why they had to go out and break laws and create all these shitty new derivatives because they weren't making as much money as they used to. So now they had to go do that, okay? But... If you push me into a corner, because I think the industry is a bunch of scumbags of just sociopaths and psychopaths, um, yeah, I think it's a fake. They've been pretty much saying they they were they it, they've been looking for a reason for the market to pull back. It hasn't pulled back two percent. It's been this many days, one hundred and sixty whatever days it was, right? Whatever. Okay, they were fixated on it. Okay. Then why is the breath so positive? Well, that would be distribution. I mean, if I look at the spies, okay. Oops. Hey, where's all my selling? Screen. Huh? Yeah, this is green, but down here, remember, no, red is buying. Got the, you still got oh, the Bloomberg up. That's what you said, screen, not green. You said screen. <laughs> Where, where's all my selling? Hmm? See, that's uh, what I'm selling. selling to you. Like, no. Well, Bloomberg, Bloomberg explained why. When you have an over concentration in the mag seven, yeah. When you have an over concentration, that's what the candle is going to look like. But looking underneath the hood, I'm like, well, that was really a big non nothing burger. I mean, I mean, uh, all I have to do whenever I start freaking out. By the way, I just look at the chart and I go, when's the last time this happened? Oh, here. Oh, look, we're higher. Oh, look here. Oh, look, we're higher. Oh, this was really bad and then went lower. This was really bad too, but we're still higher. <laughs> you know? So I'm like, okay, I'll keep this in perspective. Right? Could yeah. this develop into something on, ugly? Yeah, this could be ugly. My take on CPI is since the market is supposed to be forward looking, 
that container rates have started to climb over the last couple months. I don't know what trucking rates have done. O oil's been up what, 12, 12 or 13 percent over the last month. So that this one aberration of lower you're, CPI you're right, right. isn't, isn't going to stick around. What happens if PPI comes in hot tomorrow, though? <laughs> then what are they going to say? Because I guess the market should rally off of hot because we just dropped off of cool. But we dropped off of cool because in their mind, it increases the probability of a rate cut. And what is a rate cut in reality? It's a liquidity injection. This market knows exactly, okay, who feeds it. What feeds the market is liquidity. And that's why, that's the only reason why, okay, I still think we got top side left. And that's why I think today's a fake. There's just too much money to be made. It's too easy. I mean, if you're sitting there and you're running a, a PE or a hedge, you're looking at this going, I guarantee you there are not hedge funds. Now, there's going to be the one or two outliers that end up on CNBC. Look, here's my trade ticket. This is the day that I went completely flat. And okay, yes. But the majority of the hedge funds, hedge funds today are not saying to themselves, well, we better sell everything. The world's going to hell. No, I also think some of this was driven by their risk desks too. I think the with the the, the darkening clouds and the macro horizon, the risk desk probably got the word that, hey, yeah, we're still gonna go, you know, we're still gonna be long, but we should lighten up on some of our risk. That's I, I think a lot of it is that. So lightening up on risk through the risk desks and a sucker move because here's the thing if this market continued to trickle upwards it wasn't like everyone was ecstatic right i didn't see a lot of desperation buying now if this thing reverses and goes back up it's gonna piss people off mostly the bears they have to capitulate okay it's got to be all in for me to say, yep, we got to blow off top now. But you think about over the last how many weeks, how many people have made very good arguments that we hit the top. Okay? This was the top. I told you so. Oh, just this is just fake rebound. It's gonna kill. Uh, told you so. Oh, F and Fed. Those market makers, the short sellers, let it go back up again. Okay, this is the top. Yay, we're right. Uh, oh, this is the top. Yeah. You see how this works? Guess what? It's not the top until you can see it in your rear mirror. <laughs> Sorry. But we will know when it's the top, by the way, because we're not going to see days with, we're not going to see one day. It's going to be relentless. This, I honestly thought, was the start of it. This was relentless selling. It's going to be relentless. And you're sure as hell not going to see banks rallying. I mean, if you want to look at the fingerprints, what is the market telling you? Yeah, there you go, Jake. It drove money to where? Perhaps the single dumbest asset you could be going into at this point. Real estate mortgages, banks. We've seen this play before, so we should recognize it for its idiocy. Yeah, uh, one of the things I didn't understand, you mentioned the banks, is yeah. that I thought the higher, so the higher interest rates, the banks have been like pulling in more money because of the higher right. interest rates they're getting to charge. So they've right. been doing right. pretty, pretty well for themselves. So I was automatically thinking, okay, we start getting rate cuts. The banks should start kind of hurting on their bottom line, shouldn't they? But here's the thing. Remember, the, remember, there's multiple legs to make money for a bank, right? But there's also multiple liabilities to lose money. First is your deposits, okay? Your second is your loan book. 
Well, as I've been saying, you can extend and pretend and do all that shit. But at some point, somebody's going to say, I'm not going to be last out the door. I'm calling it now because the principal value of my loan portfolio is so upside down. They're going to have to. Look, they're all in on it. The bank regulators go out. I forget how often. Every six months, every year. But they do spot checks. They know this shit's going on. They know what their balance sheets actually look like. So the rally today in the banks was because lower interest rates is tricky liquidity. It's just liquidity. So what their hope is, I, I promise you, this is their hope. They're saying to themselves, hmm, we get one, maybe we'll get two. We get two, that will significantly affect my cash flow analysis on XYZ property. And hey, it might be able to, to support a lower loan to value. You see where I'm going, Jake? Yeah, yeah. I keep thinking, love, I keep thinking focus on, on the interest rates and the huge gains banks have been making off that. But but yeah, there's there's more than one revenue stream that they can go through. Like uh, I, when you were just talking, I was just thinking on the flip side, interest rates go down, home buying skyrockets because everybody can afford a house again, nope. you know. Yep. And yep. hey, banks get more uh more loans that way because more people are trying to enter the housing market. So that's another stream. But and more okay. loans with a great portion of them being federally backed too. So the banks have no risk, right? They do the transaction, they collect the transaction action fee, a prorated amount of the interest, because they're not going to sell the whole stream of, of interest income, you know, without taking some of it. Okay. And then they sell off the loan, they package it and sell it off. Ultimately backed by FH. Yeah, bundle it up and sell it off to somebody else. And, yeah. So yeah. if you're a banker, yeah, you'd be happy today too, wouldn't you? <laughs> because now you're saying, ooh, the experts are saying we're going to get multiple cuts. I just want to remind everyone that last fall I said no cuts. Now we're going to get six. We're going to get five. We're going to get four. We're going to get three. Then I finally relented and said, yes, yes, yes. Because of the election, these idiots are dumb enough to do it, okay? They'll cut once. The market is celebrating when before they thought they were getting six cuts. Six. Now there's the hope of getting one. They are running on fumes. Okay, people say, well, how can they be that dumb? Well, look in the mirror. Not you guys. But the average person is spending more than they make. They're, they're increasing their debt. And they think it's just all going to be one sunshine and lollipop trip forever. The country, the world is absolutely addicted to liquidity. And you can't get rid of it. As I, I forget, I was telling them, I'm like, okay, when people talk about pulling liquidity out of the system, do they understand that means, hey, you know that 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 COVID check you got? Yeah, whatever you bought with it, go get rid of it and give all the money back to us. Because that's what it takes to take liquidity out of the system. It's not just cutting credit. That means you're lessening the amount of future liquidity. But in real everyday terms, you want to pull liquidity out, you've got to return the money. <laughs> right? Return the loan. How are they going to do that? As I said, I probably said it back in June of last year when we just started. The Fed and Treasury, the Fed has caused every single financial calamity in this country. And the Fed has never been able to engineer a soft landing. You cannot land an elephant made out of turds on the bullseye of a dartboard. And that's what these guys are trying to do. They can't do it. You'll never be able to do it, ever. So that's why, unfortunately, 
despite the hope I put in for due to Gen Z, I, I do. I think the market, if, if we only end up down 50%, I think people should be absolutely thrilled. You know, by the time we get to 2026, that's if things gain speed here. But yeah, um, is a three candle rule based off daily, weekly, or monthly? Doesn't matter. Um, think about it this way, Lineman. If you're looking for trend or consolidation, consolidation is sideways trend. If you're looking for trend, does one time period tell you relative to the time period you're using? No. Does two? Could, but no, it's noise. How about three? Yeah, then you can be sure. So it doesn't matter the time frame. What the decision is, I think where you're headed is, okay, when do I use which one? Okay. Use your daily for swing trades. Anything you're planning on holding two months or less, use daily chart. Three months or more, you better be using weekly. Anything less than a day, five minute. Anything less than three to four days, hourly to four hourly. Why you'd be doing an hourly or four hourly is beyond me. It's you have two much better choices. Use the five minute or use the daily. Don't you, you know, you're like kissing the ugly cousin using the four hour. So does that answer your question, Lyman? You yes, yes, it yes, it did. And awesome. I mean, in, in fact, it it seems it, it seems small. The information seems small, but that that is a huge clarification for me. Um, one second. Let me pause one second. Sorry about that. Go ahead. The information and, um, uh, the point seems small, but yeah, but it 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 really means a lot because I was basing so much on 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 the daily charts. So being able to expand that you know to weekly and monthly um that that's huge it it opens my eyes so you know so much more um because i was just so Good. narrow focused and and if i well, can ask just one taught, more though. i mean Lyman, that's what you've been taught <laughs> that's what yeah that's what i'm learning i'm <laughs> learning the hard way and, i want to show oh, you guys something yeah go ahead yeah, um, and and I I was asking this question um, on on the board, and and I was just wondering if I can get a little clarification. So there are are a number of stocks that have big jumps overnight, and how, how do you account for that? You know, in the in the three candle rule, because you could be you know on an upswing, something <clears throat> drop overnight. But then the candle ends up mm -hmm. going over, you know, um, um, back back up during the day. But there's that big drop. So, like, I don't know how to account for that. Um. Well, let's let's find a chart that says does, does that. Saying in the overnight action, we would gap from here. We'd open up here and then go up, right? Exactly. Okay. It doesn't matter. Here's why. I'll show you why. I'm going to show, I'm going to show you why, Lyman. Oops. And I'm going to draw this. Which I'll have to edit. No, it won't let me. Okay. All right. Let, let's just say we get this candle tomorrow, and it is okay. Yep. Well, that's not work. Hold on here. Activate it. This is what you're talking about. Like that? Yep. 
And then you're going to have something like this. Oh, well, here's a tail, right? You're going to have something like that is what you're saying? Yeah. Okay. The overnight gap is not material to me because we had price discovery that happened during the cash session, the day session, that handled that gap, right? Mm -hmm. If it didn't, I'd have a gap like this, right? So yep. there's not a special consideration given to an overnight gap you're still going to be dealing with the daily action, okay? The reason why I ignore overnight action largely, okay, unless you're trading special situations like overnight gaps, the reason why I ignore it is due to the lack of data. There are just uh, enough data points. It is therefore not a trustworthy result if the number of data points is severely reduced. Right? Yep, I'm with you. Yeah, so that's why I, I ignore that. Okay? Even if I had a tail like this, the overnight gap has been taken care of. I can still, I, I, it's still the same chart, is my point. Still the same chart. This gap is no greater importance to me. Unless and until it was such a good size gap. Like that. Where it's a tradable gap now, right? Mm -hmm. So let's play a game. Price discovery. If this was the candle today, price discovery is not going to happen until you get where to the top side. High price, right? Well, couldn't it couldn't it take a while for it to get there though? Sure, it can. That's the point. Until it, 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 it until as long as price is inside of this candle, okay, no matter the time frame, okay, there has been no new price discovery. Without new price discovery, okay, you're gonna have a difficult decision on which direction that you need to trade. Right? Mm -hmm. So therefore, that's why I want and I, and I trigger into and off of areas where I know previous price discovery has ended. And because of that, I know that there is past data that bots remember that they either succeeded or failed at that price point. I'm taking advantage of how they're programmed at a very base level. Okay. Mm -hmm. we, we we get to take advantage of that all the time when a when a stock moves in our favor and gamma explodes, because when they compute gamma, you know, well, why would they? Why would the option accelerate price so much? Well, because they're doing a straight line extrapolation. They're saying, hey, if Gamma is now doing this today. This will continue all the way out to here for the next whatever days, how far you project. Literally, that's what it's doing. Obviously, we know that's mathematically false. Or, or in real life, it's false. That's not what happens. Gamma doesn't stay at a constant. It drops and it goes up. Okay. Well, that's where you get into third level derivatives and who cares? I'm not managing, you know, a, a delta neutral uh, fund. You're not either. You're making money. So it's, it's again, it's, it's understanding where you can take advantage of the very things that are set up to make you fail. Knowing where bots and algorithms do business, okay? Um, that's a big deal because you're not trading blind anymore. Check this out. 
This was the low close doji. Let's do this. Let's take all these studies off. Hey, there we go. Look at this. This was the low close doji. Here's your doji low, hammer, whatever. Within three days, for a reversal, the price must close above the doji lows high. Didn't, didn't. Oh, there it did. Third day. Otherwise, if it hadn't, we'd be in a trend sideways. It did. We get in the very next day and look what happened. It literally crapped the bed. But here's why these areas where price discovery is truncated before. Oh, look over here. Did the same thing. Oh, look here. Oh, look here. Yeah, this pretty stout area. Think there's a lot of memory there from the bots? You betcha there is. Okay. We get in, but I made the comment at least two or three times. I said, I'm telling you, if you can enter these correctly, and this is for scalping too, this stop rarely, rarely will get hit. Okay. You'll get time stopped before you get stopped here or you'll have scaled or whatever. Okay. So we stick with it. We had members who didn't stick with it. Okay. Whatever excuse they gave, it's an excuse and it's horseshit. You got out. That wasn't part of the plan. Okay. Okay. Feeling a little better. I remember this, by the way. I was feeling a little better. Oh, then this shit happened. Still didn't hit my stop. Then this happened. And this, this was the break level. Okay. That I had drawn. Banged its head against it again, finally made it through, and then look what happened. There is no news. Okay. And this was a day when the NASDAQ was down 2%. Now, somebody might say, well, yeah, this is the dash for trash. So it's picking up shitty companies like that. Okay. I, I that could be today. Couple takeaways. Low close dojis, their stops work if you can enter correctly. All right. When I say enter correctly, is by the time it confirms that price is close enough where you can use this as a stop. That's one of the problems that we have with options. Okay. But inevitably, low close dojis and high close dojis are awesome reversal patterns. And this is why we respect our stops. Because there were people today who could have gotten out, I think, at a 4X. I did not. I got out early. I think I only made like 60-some percent. Right? I looked at them like, well, that pisses me off. Well, here's, again, I would much rather, and this happens if you're around here long enough, you get pissed off because you don't make mo enough money. Not that you don't make money, that you don't make enough money. What a change in expectation and perspective, right? So um, I just wanted to point this one out. We, we've had, look, we have had multiple okay, trades where we have literally had to sit there and take heat. Look at this one. There's the break. Yay, we're so happy. What the? F Never closed above the break. But I know there were people who sold here. Okay. Yep. I don't care what the reason is. You sold. Trust the math. Okay, trust the math. If the levels that I was putting out were just horse crap, then why would have why would price be doing this here? Why? Why did it try again here? Why is it struggling again here? Why? 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 Because it's not bull crap. Okay. Sorry, I went on a rant. Other questions.
And I don't know, you know, some of us are in Amazon. I just saw a news report that uh, Bezos just authorized another 400 million to sell. Uh, so yeah, it looks like we'll be exiting that because that was my thesis and my thesis has changed. Amazon, uh, as well as, what was that other one? A firm. Here, here's a crappy company that it is inevitable they go out of business. Inevitable. Okay? They're the ones you, you go buy a loaf of bread and split it up in five payments, people. Right? I don't know. We may get a reversal on this tomorrow, a stick save. If we don't, I'm out. I think I'll lose like 28%. Okay. I move on. Right now, if you all have been paying attention, I have been sizing down every single trade because right now risk is high. We're, we're, we're dawdling around at the top. We got major political and economic things going on and then all the outlier stuff. Risk is high right now. So, and if, you know, if you're looking at the cues, uh, monthlies in an uptrend. Weekly still in an uptrend. Now, we close here this week. Uh, oh, that's daily. I'm sorry. Weekly still in an uptrend. Do, do, do. And we can't confirm this reversal until the end of next week. Who wants to bet me that this thing doesn't confirm next week? I don't think it will. I could be wrong. That's okay. I'll change it. Daily is now a confirmed reversal. Tomorrow, it will tell us whether we're now in a downtrend. But that doesn't mean anything to the weekly and the monthly. And there's a hell of a lot more money that's been committed in the weekly and the monthly timeframes than just one day. Again, my point is to change trend is like changing a humongous oil tanker. It takes time. You can literally tell everyone around you days and days ahead that you're going to make in this turn, you're going to make this turn, and it's still going to take a lot of time. Just because you know, okay, that it's happening doesn't mean that you know how long it will take. So even if somebody does get it right, and my other response is, how long is it going to take before the rest of the market's convinced that the market is topped? As long as they're in, with today's reaction in the market, they're not ready. They rallied, okay? The, 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 the banks, mortgages, REITs, they rallied. Why? Because their business prospects look better? No. Because there's the, the hope now of an interest rate cut, which again is just liquidity. Looking for liquidity injection. That's it. And wait till you see the world's, I think three of them have already cut, right? UK, Germany. There's one more that cut already. So I, I think you're going to start seeing the world's central banks cutting. And you all know what happens when they cut rates especially in an inflationary environment. Oh, it's like pouring jet fuel on a fire. These people have no idea what they're doing. And here's the other thing. They do not care. It does not matter to them. They do not care. They don't shop at grocery stores. They don't pay their own bills. Largely, they don't even drive themselves around. Okay? So they do not care because they do not understand. Um, yes. Any other questions or symbols you want me to look at? Question. But what does Jake's hard eyes emoji mean on my boardroom comment this afternoon? I'm concerned. Oh my gosh. Jake. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jake. Oh, Jake. It's okay. We love we love everyone. It doesn't matter the <laughs> color of the spectrum or the color of the flag, Jake. We love everyone. Just some people are going to get teased a little bit more than others. But, <laughs> oh my God.
gosh. Yeah, well, GC, I do like the fact. I mean, what are you going to do, right? The whole market was cratering. Yeah. yeah. You know? No, I mean, I'm thrilled. I mean, I'm I'm out. I can better utilize that capital. Free at last. Free at last. Well, Free at last. Uh, I, I, I have those leaps. Um, here's the problem. Anything I do now leap-wise – whether it's NFX or USC, even though I'm going out to 26, I know that there's no way any of those contracts are going to make it to 2026. Let me put it this way. There's like a less than 10% chance. But just in case it takes a lot longer for all of this to finally come to a head, I got 26s. So, and it's working in our favor on those longer term ones too, because they're the ones that are moving like an EOSE. They're the ones that are moving. We're almost up, what, 100% in those? So, and no, I'm not going to sell. All right, so. Um, oh, oh, here's the other thing. Uh, even at its highest level today, the VIX was only up 49. Point. Four nine. Does that sound to you like people were out there buying a whole crap ton of protection in order to skew the VIX up? No. No. Why? Because they weren't. Why? Because they don't think the party's over either. Now they may they may force a cycle, uh, a, a pivot to some of these other assets, but okay. I'm putting the VIP thing out tonight that's going long a REIT. Hit the price level. We're going to see what the price discovery is. We're good. We're a little lucky. The price discovery will go into our direction. We caught the momentum and we made money in a steaming turd. Okay. I, I don't care how we make the money as long as it's not in supporting Abercrombie and Fitch. But you didn't see a VIX spike today. Not even close. So, no. Oh, and the other one I was watching, I was laughing. Okay. Palantir today. Yeah, I gave back like, what, 28% profits. But I'm slightly green still in the trade. And this is the five-minute chart of Palantir. Here's the open, new high, and then it succumbed to selling. But we didn't close at the lows of the day, and it was pretty strong selling, or pretty strong buying on the five. So that tells me, unless we get another big crater day tomorrow, yep. That was, Kathy Wood. that was Kathy Wood buying at the end there. Oh, yeah, that's what screwed us today. She opened her mouth, gave it the kiss of death. She's like Medusa. She's Medusa and Kramer's a clown, but I want to check the hourly, though. Oh, hammer reversal on the hourly. Let's see what it does against this big candle. That's where it's at right now. What's the four hour look like? Nothing yet. So I got the five minute in buy, hourly in buy, four minute still in sell, daily in sell, weekly in buy, monthly in buy. When you start thinking things like that, at least for me, it makes it easier to get an understanding of trend over specific time frame too. Um, oh, here, final thing I wanted to show you. That's right. I want to show you all of this. I did not have, okay. I called this out right here 
Doji low, add an area of support. I went long because it confirmed on the third candle. That's when I got into the pounder calls, and then it just did this. Right? Okay. Here's the deal. We're still above the price of my entry. Okay. And again, the stop held over a long period of time. And this was sort of, when this happened, this was like a, a straight up deal. It happened really quick. Um, I think we got close to 28 bucks. It was like a 60 cent move. So it was a big difference on the option pricing. It's the difference between us being like given a slightly prof profitable day to be being down probably 15 to 25%. So, but yes, that's where I went long. Can you look at the calendar, the, your option pricing for today? Sure. Today's option pricing or a the specific his, month? His, today's history of the price of t of your, the option that you're in that we're in. Well, I'm oh yeah, yeah. Of... Sure, hold on, I can do that. Watch this. Beep, beep, beep. And we only want to do today. Okay. So we did drop there's down today. To close. Yeah. Okay. 238 high. Ended at 198. Low the was day. a buck sixty-four. Oh yeah, we got hit today. We got hit. Yeah. But yeah. My point is, oh, I didn't see this. You go on closes. You go on Who closes. Is this guy? Yeah, closes. Well, somebody stepped in with a two thousand buy. But I don't know. Yeah. But yeah, we, we withstood it. And tomorrow if we, you know, well, now it's just any green is going to help us. Here's my point. My point is if you set your stops right, it gives you the time to stay in a trade. So therefore, don't pay attention what it's doing intraday. I mean, yes, pay attention, but don't allow that to be your trade carrier. Okay, don't that's not your trade trigger. Your trade trigger is your stop. Your trade trigger is your target. This is why we trade to those. Otherwise, let the probabilities work in your favor. And I don't care how because it can be nerve-wracking. I know. Yeah, it, it can be nerve-wracking. But I, I've got the data set. And for those of you who've been here over a year, you have the data set. You've seen it. Just, you know, don't make it harder than it is. I have no idea what this theoretical option price is. That's the cues. I don't know. Who knows why I did that? Um, I am curious this one, though. Can you do that same history with uh, an IV? Implied volatility? Sure. You bet. I think he means within a stock IV, not on the VIX. I oh, yeah. The VIX oh. Per stock. Yeah, exactly. Like this? Like, would you be like uh, the way you were looking at the option pricing for the option pricing history for uh, Palantir? Yeah. Would you be able to do that same thing with with their IV? And I'm only oh. asking because I always wanted to see uh, the progression in the sure. increase of IV, like sure. over, you know, over time, and and, and around earnings. 
Let's talk. Um, let's do. Let's do RTX. Let's say I just I just pick one. All right, here you go. Last earnings. IV got this is the IV right here. Okay, got up as high as thirty six. 28, 31. So we're, we're pretty close. Looks like this thing could peak out here to 36. You follow? Yeah, that's 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 awesome. I've been looking for that type of information for whatever. I didn't even realize you could do it. Um, right yeah, if you go now. to studies, are you on Thinkorswim? Yeah. Let's go to studies, add study, volatility study. Blah, nice job. Imply volatility. Ah, beautiful. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, you bet. I'm a wealth of useless knowledge. Um, <laughs> not today. Okay, anything else? Uh, yeah, I got a quick question. Um, I'm not sure, sure. if I'm allowed to ask about the stock since it was a trader stock, but uh, uh, you said that you were looking for a stick save on a firm, but there wasn't at the end. So does that mean tomorrow mm. day to cut, or would you continue yeah. to let it play out? Uh, no, here's, here's what I got to do tomorrow, okay? Unless I see immediately, like in the first 20, 30 minutes, mm -hmm. this thing reverse to the downside. Yeah. Okay. I will take the stop. I'll set out, I'll put out the tweet tonight. Mm -hmm. I'll put it in the, the, the channel. I, I will take this stop. Okay. So um, just a follow-up question because with some, sure. some stocks, you know, like, yeah, like a huge run of like today, it went way past my stop. So it didn't trigger. Yeah. Um, yeah. Give me the symbol. Our situations, like when you wake up to a stock way above or way below um, your estimations. Um, What's the symbol? Oh, no. I was just talking about like in relation to like a stocks like a firm today. I didn't have another. Oh, what do I do? For future reference, you know, like uh, not way past the stock. I, I curse out all the blood sucking financially <laughs> economically irresponsible people who are in charge no what i got to do okay here we go price discovery right all right well today we know where price discovery ended right mm -hmm. i better see this price start trending early on down yeah. towards this area of price discovery all right. right otherwise that wagon is going in the wrong direction and i get out right mm -hmm. It's not emotional. Oh yeah, no, just, just curious. For me, well, no, but I wanted to. Fit, it's not emotional for me because who am I to argue with price? It didn't do what I thought it would do. People get caught up. Yeah, but it didn't do it because you got hosed by you know uh, I'm Palantir or by Kathy Wood. Okay, could I have accounted for that? No, no way to know that data. Okay, it's an outlier. Yeah, well that happens. Cool. But I know, more often than not, I'm going to make money. <laughs> right? You're right. So in situations where you're looking for a retrace, you're looking at the first 20, 30 minutes of the day? Yeah. Yeah. yeah you, you, well, in here, look, here's where you get faked out. Sometimes the retraces don't happen until the power hour later in the day. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then it happened and I didn't get it. Right. But if we're playing the if we're playing the odds and we have a hundred trade sample, that may happen three times, four times. Hmm. Okay. More, so but, then, but it probably stick saves, mm -hmm. you know. So the stick save that I'm referring to is tomorrow. Okay. So it's not end of day not, situation. No, not the end of day. In fact, if you look at, I'll show you one. There's a here. We went in here. Yay, we're happy. No, we're not. Okay. But I mean, it closed back down here. 
wait, we, we have better ones where, oh yeah, love. Yeah. Okay, we went in here long and then immediately did this. Didn't hit my stop, okay? This one didn't hit my stop either, but I know, okay, that I was commenting. You know, we we need we need the top end of this range taken out tomorrow, or we need at least be in that direction. Otherwise, sideways to down, I got to make a decision. Uh, you know, respect my stop, get out. I mean, I'd respect my stop, but here's my here's my point. Yeah, there's going to be those rare times where you know you sell them, you close it in the morning, and then you get you get stopped out. Okay, you take a cheap stop what we call it. okay that's okay mm -hmm. you know that's okay that happens but it doesn't happen a lot you know with a firm you know, you know right now my thesis is busted <laughs> <laughs> right my yeah. thesis is busted so i can either prove to price why i'm right and lose money or okay i'll follow what price says and i'll just keep making money right. this is where it's those little details because this is where a 28 percent loss turns into a 80 percent or a 90 percent or what's worse is the damage it does to your brain you did a bad habit you got that high you got smacked around so now you're like screw it i don't care no we don't want you to get there no of course. it's all about Right, getting staying in control. So yeah, I'm gonna have to take the stop. I'm not very happy about it, I don't, you know. But I don't lose a lot of sleep. I'm like, okay, next one. Yeah. Next. And the calendar made me happy today because I was laughing about it because I don't know who I was. Maybe we were in the conference room and I was talking about Palantir, and I'm like, oh, just got a little closed doji. First one. And that was about the time the market was petering out too. Um, oh yeah, hey, if um, if the market was check this out, look at this spike in volatility. Mm -hmm. The night before we went, we closed and it was a sixty six. We opened up, and the volatility was up to sixty nine, seventy. Okay, four was sixty six, four six, four sevens, whatever that is, right? 35, 36% jump in volatility. Yep. Right? We ended up somewhere in the middle. But if this was, if there was, if if there was a lot of selling going on, this would not have come back down. This would have kept going up. Yeah. So there's another thing, you know, you look at fingerprints, you go, hmm, that's not telling me that I got a whole crap ton of selling either. Look at Tesla, it's even worse. Being, the, Tesla opened up with less volatility. No, 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 no. Thursday, 7.30. It didn't even move this morning, first of all. And then when it did spike, it went from a 74 volatility up to an 84. And we ended the day at a 67. Does that look to you like market participants today were saying the sky is falling? No. Nope, nope, nope. That is not evidence of that. Even more so, on a big red, oh, did it take in this? No, it didn't. Okay. Even more so, implied volatility dropped today on Tesla. Well, that's not normal. Because usually implied volatility drops when the stock goes up, right? Right. What's that about? This is why. This is why I stopped and said, uh, "I think it could be a fake out." I don't know, but that's what I'm seeing. I'm like, well, I'm not seeing, mm. you know, these other fingerprints where big, big money is at work on the options. That right is that you'd see it immediately in the implied volatility, immediately. Mm -hmm. And yet today we saw it go down. I wonder what Amazon's did. 
Oh, see, going up. All right, fair enough. Do uh, meta. Going up. Video. Going up. But none of these are at extreme levels of implied volatility. Here's the other thing. How are they going to deal with what should be not terrible earnings news? How are they going to deal with that in the market? Mm -hmm. They have no choice but to let this market go up. If they don't, then the market's going to throw a big fat tantrum and it's going to lose a lot of money very quickly. They have no choice. They created the problem. Literally trying to tell a bunch of professional fentanyl users that they should tone it down. <laughs> 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 right? <laughs> so, um, NMX didn't move. NMX, by the way, had a, a very strong day today. I was actually sort of surprised. Go to EOS. Well, and you, look at EOS is all already indicating opening higher. I know it's early. This one didn't trigger jets. Uh-oh, Palantir looks like softening um, NVIDIA, Amazon. Yeah. Okay, NVX, <laughs> yeah, well, that doesn't happen until the next week. Uh, volatility jumps, were you factored into an entry exit? Yeah, you know, like we do on count um, uh, with our uh earnings plays remember we had a couple of earnings plays last year where we literally sold it before the earnings came out because the iv had risen so much it made our options profitable <laughs> but yeah i i will factor in volatility jumps uh, uh, especially because of um the effect it's going to have on my option pricing right it's uh, options are so sensitive to it so uh, i i do know that there are people that trade where they'll scan for huge jumps in IV and they'll just, I mean, they, they do analysis, but that makes the screen for them to be sellers. There's a um, iron condors, people, I used to trade those. And I was taught the way you trade an iron condor is you do it when the implied volatility is, um, let's see, higher than the historical volatility. So you expect volatility compression and that'll allow you to buy back your sold uh, wings. Um, yeah, uh, that Iron Condor uses IV versus HV. That's like a standard basic analysis for them, for those people. It's just freaking expensive. All right. Oh, PG, Procter & Gamble. That was my dad's old company. Well, Jake, Mr. Jake, monthly, yeah, uptrend, weekly, uptrend, daily, channel, There you go. Nothing to do, Jake, until we either test, we get price discovery here or there. Agreed? Yeah, what do you think? Like, uh, it was like 162 or 160, something like that? 161, 18, 161, 45, somewhere around there, whatever this low is. Okay. 161, 48. 161.7, yeah, 161.48. Yeah. So it breaks that, and then after it breaks that, you know, you, there's enough room to go down 13 points, 14 points. Yeah, because it's going to be back. It'll be down into this battle zone here. Break that one. 
Then it gets really nice. We break this battles of this this line in the sand. Ooh, next price discovery doesn't happen until 141. Super easy to see these zones. And that's how we trade from zone to zone. Yep. I think I had an alert set just to watch for the uh, for the breakdown there. I had an alert go off on it earlier today or at the end of the day. Uh, we're breaking this low or the close. Yeah. What was this low? 165.54. Close. 165.54. You see that, Jake? You see the horse crap? The low, 165.54. Where they close it, 165.54. You know what that tells me? There are some algorithms and bots are just screwing around in here. Because they didn't want this to close below this low. Why? Because they know that there are bots and algorithms that trigger off a of shit like that. I think there was just a bunch of uh, insider selling today, too. Yeah, but, you know, when, you know, Bezos and all these big sells, I mean, without the tinfoil hat, I'm like, well, it makes sense. Bezos moved to Florida. Look how much he's saving himself in taxes. So he's selling as much as he can, you know. Um, you know, the argument that they are all selling at the same time, by the way. I mean, you sort of have to wear a tinfoil hat if you want to have a logical explanation for why they've been doing that. But um, p and is just the most boring stock in the world. Ugh. Oh, my gosh. Oops. Oops. All right. So that's it. That is my super duper presentation for the day. They ain't got no muscle, no hustle, no backbone. I stand alone, not tripping. Just say I'm different. Ain't hanging on to the coat sales of the next man. Pop forward in my left hand. Thinking that you are next. Heck, oh, you ain't